First came the Arkfeld, which was a Apple TV remote shaped flashlight that had an emitter and a laser. Then came the Arkfeld UV, the same similar shape, but this time it had an emitter for white light and a UV light. And these two lights are fun. They're kind of kind of really fun to carry. The thing about them though is I always don't know which one I want to carry because it's like having the additional laser is fun, but having UV is fun and it was always like what do I do? So enter the brand new Arkfeld Pro. This time you do not have to choose between laser or UV. You get both. Three lights in one. Welcome back to Shoe Lights. We got the new Arkfeld Pro, and it is a worthy upgrade. I'm gonna tell you that right now. It takes anything you liked about the original Arkfelds and makes them better. Everything got better. Uh, oftentimes, companies will slap Pro on something and it's just marketing. This literally is a better version of everything these lights were, so let's dive into it. It's a little bit larger, so we'll, we'll say that right away. A little bit bigger. Let me get a better focus. Um, I mean, the width, uh, the width is a little, a little deeper. Not that I noticed in my hand, you know, I don't notice. Um, it does feel longer, but that doesn't feel too long. I mean, it's still, it's still hand sized, so that's not an issue. Um, yeah, I mean, it's a little bigger in all dimensions, so just know that. However, when it comes to weight, uh, it's pretty lightweight. Uh, this is brass, so it's a heavy boy. This one's 172 grams. This one's titanium, and it was 117 grams. And this larger guy with more output, better run times in aluminum is 110 grams. So it's the lightest of all three of these. Uh, it is aluminum, so take that into account. But uh, I don't find it heavy. Now, let's look at the ergonomics really quickly and point out that this was the first gen clip. The first gen clip had this kind of straight one-way clip, right? It only goes one way. Not a true deep carry because you had this sticking out. And the body shape was part of the clip design. I heard a lot of people say they didn't like that. They said, you know, the light was too, th too thick. And I said, well, the light's really thin. And they said, oh, no, it's this thick. Well, I always thought that was part of the clip. Um, that was a point of argument, I suppose, for some. So then in the next generation, I guess the light listened, and they made it thinner. Now the clip comes up on its own. It's also reversible. Uh, it does have these screws down underneath. It hasn't been a problem for me, but I heard a couple users say that they didn't prefer the clips, uh, the screws there. They preferred the screws on the outside clip like on this one. So I don't know. I didn't really have a problem with either clip. They both seemed fine to me. It is a deeper carry though, so I'm gonna have to give the nod to the new clip design and the Pro carries over that new deep clip design. And if you look, yes, the overall body is thicker by a couple millimeters, but it's totally straight now. It doesn't have this little flourish at the end, so the clip itself is deeper. So it's not the same clip. It's, it's a similar design, but you can see that this clip on the Pro has a deeper bend in here, and it's longer, everything's deeper, so it means that when you're slipping it in your pants, it is easier, not dramatically so, but it is easier than even this one. So the clip's improved, all right? Uh, Non-replaceable battery and an MCC charge port, which is to be expected. That's what all the Arkfelds are. So if you didn't know that, well, that's what it is. I love the included MCC. It, they include this, and I say this in all my videos, yes, it's proprietary, yes, it's very Apple style, not, you know, a standard USB-C, but, I mean, again, if this is a duty light I'm using every day, and I hop into bed, all I have to do is, you know, just very wearily, without even looking, go, uh, and it just clicks on, and then I'm charging. So, I love the thing. 
not having to remove the battery, not having to fumble with a flappy doodle or some port. I mean, I, I, I love it. I have no problem. So I like the MCC and they include it, so it comes with it. Also, the fact that it's magnetic means that this is a magnetic tail. You can stick it to objects. So if you're you know, working on a car or something, stick it to the underside of the hood. Okay, let's take a look at the UI, which is chef's kiss excellent. So you've got this new larger dial here. So there was a dial on all of these, and these were relatively clicky, uh, which I didn't mind. But they took a, a fair amount of force. Here, listen to this click. Okay, that's the click. Um, the new one doesn't click as much. I don't know. Maybe I'm, maybe I'm picking nits here. Maybe it's almost the same. But you know what it is? There's less friction. That's what it is. These two have considerably more friction and less travel as well. So more friction, less travel. This one has less friction and more travel, and somehow that combines to mean that it's a better switch experience. Also, the selector on all three of these is excellent. I mean, if you're gonna have a multi-mode light, I've long stated the multi-mode lights should have mode selectors, and that's what you got, a mode selector and then an activation switch. They're clearly labeled, and they're logically labeled. Yes! What I mean is, if I go here, that is the white light on the side. If I go to the middle, that is the laser, which is right there. And if I go to this side, that is the UV light that's over here. So thank you for doing it logically. This light has a great indicator right here. So if I turn it on, you can see it says it's four bars out of four for charge. And the light is on right now. Now when I'm pressing and holding, okay, so I'm cycling, it's always telling battery indication. This is never power indication so we can cycle through like that and it's low medium high as you expect low medium high low medium high there is a hidden moonlight so if i press and hold there's your moonlight and if i double tap i get to turbo and the turbo is monstrous this time on the last versions they are putting out about a thousand lumens now they somehow got it up to 1300 lumens which is a hundred lumens higher than the new warrior nano so, yeah, guys, the Arcfeld Pro puts out more lumens than the Warrior Nano. Although the Warrior Nano is a little more concentrated, there's a little more floodier of beams, so I think that um, there are different styles of lights, but it's a lot of lumens. Speaking of that, let's take a look at the fact that, okay, there was a change made to the, uh, the optics here. So the original one had this kind of big TIR, optic and it was pretty defined um i wouldn't say super defined but it was it was in the in the middle then when they added the reflector they needed to like come over the center line and they so it requires a smaller white optic and this one got floodier as a result and if you look at the pro it inherits that same sized optic so, it's about as floody as the UV version. So, if you didn't love the floodiness of the UV version, you know, it's kind of the same. But I will say this, though. These are both a 1,000. When I shine these at a wall, this one's floodier, but it spreads out the lumens, the same lumens, 1,000, but spreads them out more, so it seems dimmer. This one seemed, well, it has more candela, so it's more concentrated. Well, what I like is that on these two, even though this one has a floodier beam, and I'll show this later in the video, it has 1300 lumens versus the 1000. They feel similar in output. So what you're getting is similar, what feels like similar lumens over a wider range, right? Now, let's take a look at the laser. Now, the laser is a huge upgrade. Yay! This laser, I... The best thing I could have said about it before... Here, let me get a better focus on that. Is that it was not dangerous. <laughs> that was the best thing I could say about it. I mean, it's green and it works. But it wasn't winning any brightness awards. I finally got out my laser power meter and measured this because I wanted to empirically know what the difference between this one and this one was. And it turns out that this one 
is eight to 10 times brighter. The Pro is eight to 10 times brighter than the previous version. I had several of these and they all measured about 500 uh, nanowatts or if I did my math right. So it's half, half a milliwatt is what I'm trying to say, 0.5 milliwatts. So that's what these measure. This guy is measuring on my LPM at five milliwatts. Not 0.5, 5. So that's 10 times brighter. I say 8 to 10 because sometimes, depending on the angle and everything, I got almost 600 uh, nanowatts or 0.6 milliwatts out of this. So it's, it's, it's dramatically brighter. Let's take a look. Here's the, uh, there you go. There's the original version. You can see it's just a much brighter, bigger spot. I mean, you know, it, it's, it's obvious how much brighter it is. Um, I would say that at night, this guy was fine. Inside, this was fine. Outside on the exterior of a house, it was kind of hard to see. Um, this one is no problem outside in the exterior of a house, and I'll show that later. We'll go outside and take a look. Okay, so that's the laser. Improved vastly. The laser's way better. And lastly, the UV. The UV is brighter on this model than the previous model. It's, I don't know how they did it, but it's a little brighter. And for those of you that know about the Hank Wang D4, which comes with an optional UV, this light has a brighter UV than this one does. So let's take some Uper light. Here we go. Let's take the Hank Wang. There we go. And let me make sure I'm on turbo. Hand, turn it on and turbo. There we go. So there is the result with the Hank Wang Uper light, uh, Hank Wang D4 UV on the Uper light. Now let's do this guy. And you can see already how much brighter that is. It's also a smaller beam. So you're getting a more concentrated dimmer beam over here. And over here, you're getting a brighter, more spread out beam. So um, hats off to them. They got... You know, the best small UV carry I can think of with a laser and a white light. I think this is finally the multifunction light that educators, contractors, uh, you know, uh, maybe some LEO, you know, for checking like, you know, licenses for uh, watermarks and stuff like that. Uh, it's, it sounds it sounds good to me. Yeah. Now, let's let's. I said I was in the UI section. I guess I kind of am. I've been talking about switching here. Let's continue with that. Here's a great feature. This feature is amazing to me. So we are in the light. You can double tap to turbo, double tap to return, press and hold to you know flip around. There is a timer function. There is a lockout function. I'm not going to show it in the video. It's in the manual. Uh, but I want to tell you that uh, this was such a welcome surprise when I noticed this. And that is... You can switch to laser, turn it on, then double tap and get the white light and the laser simultaneously. Oh, thank you. No, I think it's amazing because imagine you're a contractor. You're up in a, at a crawl space with somebody. You're trying to tell them where a joist needs to be replaced or whatever. So you're trying to use the laser, but it's dark because it's an attic. So boom, light, laser, perfect. I really like that. It makes, it makes logical sense. There's nothing hidden on UV. So when you turn it on, double click, it doesn't do anything. So uh, the double click is on the laser function to get both of these on the right. All right, let's talk about tint and lumens. I'm not gonna show you the Sekonic, but I did the measurements. This guy was right around the 5,000 range, just a little bit below, like 4,800. And uh, it was just slightly above BBL. So I found it about plus 28. Again, that is above BBL, but I did not see it as green. It seemed fine to me. Uh, now, let's talk about lumens. So let's start with Moonlight, which is sublumen. Look at that, 0.9, awesome. Now let's go up to low. We got 15, medium is about 100. High is 400, okay. Now we're gonna double tap to turbo. So I will double tap right now. And you see we got about 1250. Now, I did hit 1300 on the lumen tube with this light. Uh, I've been using it during the making of this video. I didn't want to retop it off, but it definitely hit 1300. And notice that it's dropping very slowly. 
we're 15 seconds in already and it's still only dropped up you know 20 30 lumens and we're coming up on anzi in just a few seconds here yeah look at that we're still at anzi 1230 lumens on something that started at 1250 this is a great driver look at that it's still hanging out post anzi Okay, so it is 1300. Uh, I, I'm sorry I'm not showing it to you on here, but believe me, I mean, I tested it. Um, it's a great driver, it's efficient. You know, getting high lumens on a small form factor like this is partly due to the fact that it's an Osram P9. So, I mean, if you wanna, you know, modify this light and put an Ichi 509A in, go for it, but you're not gonna have the same throw. And uh, I just kind of feel like I know, I know these are fighting words, but I kind of feel like Olight knows what they're doing for this light. To me, this is not a light that's intended for a beautiful quality of light. It's like a work light, right? And so I think that the Osram P9 is a welcome addition, and the, at least the neutral white that I've been getting recently are really close to neutral, so I'm happy with them. Okay, so let's do an inside beam test. Um, here is the old laser version you can see how big the hot spot is and over here on my trooper let me turn it up a mode you can see it's a little bit floody bigger than his torso there okay now here is the new pro let's take a look at it turn it on and there we go so it's warmer because this is a cool osram p9 and this is the warm one but you can see it's it's not that different it's a little floodier, it is. Side by side, let me see if you can tell. Yeah, it's a little floodier, you can see that. The, the warmer circle's a little bigger. But here's the deal, let's turbo this. Now let's turbo this. You see what I'm saying? Those extra lumens are important. Now, it's also true there's probably a little bit of a cheat going on because I don't have this fully charged, so it might not be hitting the thousand it should be hitting. Uh, but this one's hitting 1300, and it, I mean, it's, it's noticeably brighter. Also, let's take a moment to look at the laser. So we're indoors, lights are on, but indoors, there's the laser, you know. I'm gonna go ahead and point at his gun here. Okay, now, if I do the laser here, look how much brighter that is. That's great. Okay, we're outside and I'm gonna point this laser, this is the old version, I'm pointing it on the white Eve right there. I can see it with my eye, I hope it's showing up on the video. I'll point it in the shadow under the eave on the yellowish wall, okay? Uh, it's not super easy to see. I'm pointing along the seam there in the house. So over, over here is where I'm at right now. Uh, okay, now let's take a look at the new one. It's considerably brighter. So now I'm on the white eave. Now I'm down in the shadow under the eave. And then now I'm over on that seam. It's a noticeable difference. And we're in the shade during the day. Okay, broad daylight. Um, I turn the laser on. I'm even checking that it's on. There we go. Turn the laser on. I check on my hand. I don't see it on the wall. Oh, there it is. I just spotted it. It is so hard to see. If I mean, if I was pointing something out to someone else, I'm in the shadow right now. I'm in that shadow right there. If I was pointing that out to someone else, I don't think they would pick it up where I was pointing. Let's take the new one. Yeah, see that, I, I think people would see. And let's go side by side. I mean, there's a huge difference. So I got the old one on the left and the new one on the right in the shadow there. Let's go on the wall. The, the old one, it's lost on the wall. The new one, I can still see with my eyes. I don't know if it's on video, but uh, it's a big improvement. It's a real big improvement. All right, let's do some beam shots on this very foggy night. Now, a foggy night is going to mean that the beam shots are going to be more pronounced, which is awesome, but I'm not gonna be able to get the same throw. Good news is none of these lights, either Arcfeld, you know, the, the regular laser version or the Arcfeld Pro are known to be throwers. So I think it's actually gonna be a good thing, all right? So let's take a look. Now I'm always gonna keep the Arcfeld regular laser version in my left hand at all times and the Arcfeld Pro in my right hand. So uh, also note that as uh, the Arcfeld Pro here is a neutral white, about 5000K version, 
this is going to be a cool white, about 6,000 K, the same emitter, but uh, different color temps. So let's first try out the beams. So we're gonna go old one first, and I'm gonna go straight to turbo. And there we're getting some good beam shots there. I'm gonna kind of go around a little bit. Wow, the fog really lights up. But you know what's great is we're gonna see that the Arkfeld Pro, while brighter, has a floodier beam. Unfortunately, I wish it was a little more throwy. Uh, the beam is a little more concentrated on the old version than it is on the new one. So let's go to turbo on the new one. And I think we can see in the beam shots here, you know, like pan around the ground for a moment. We'll look at that aerial version, the aerial view. Now let's go to the old one and you can see that it's more directional in the old one versus the new one. You can see the new one's a little bit wider of a cone. And if we look at the, the uh, front camera here, you can see that the hot spot is a little more concentrated on this old one. And then here's the new one. You can see it's a little bit floodier. Now that's not to say that it's bad. I wish that it was throwier just because they're both around a thousand. You know, we got a thousand lumens for the old version, 1300 for the new one, which is welcome that extra 30%. But you know, the more throw it is, the brighter it seems to be. So I wish it was a combination of both. But I do understand that the optic has to be a little smaller in the new version to accommodate the space for the large optic for the UV as well as the laser. Now, while we're out here, let's take a look at the lasers. You saw them during the daytime and you could see, you know, I showed you that the new Arkfeld Pro is about four to five times brighter. Let's look at night and see how that is. So here's the old one. And uh, we're not gonna see the overhead view. I just know that the overhead view won't show it at all. But when I aim it on camera like this, you should be seeing the laser beam a little bit. But now let's turn on the Pro. Look how much brighter the Pro is. So this is gonna be much better for pointing out stars if you're in astronomy. Let's do it on the tree here. You see how much brighter, oh, gotta get the focus how much brighter the pro is on the right versus the original on the left. Uh, let's go ahead and do it on the street here and we'll go away till we get to the end of the street and I'm hitting those palm trees at the end of the street. There's a lot of fog that's really blocking the beam. So if this was a clear night, we'd see them on those palm trees at the end of the street very easily. But the fog is showing the beam, which is a plus, and you can see that this one on the right, the new Pro is clearly 10 times brighter. I measured the old beam at about half a milliwatt on my LPM, my laser power meter, and the new one is about five milliwatts. So that's a difference of about 10 times. One last thing before we go, I'd be remiss if I didn't show you the combo laser and flashlight at once at night. So there is your flashlight and laser at the same time. Again, I think this is gonna be a good thing for in dark spaces, like in an attic, like as a contractor, but I think this is a cool thing to show even at night. The Arkfeld was an interesting light to begin with, and the Arkfeld Pro doubles down on that and improves everything. So if you already had an Arkfeld and you're wondering, is it a worthy successor? Should I upgrade? I think yes. You already like Arkfeld. This is better. If you didn't buy into Arkfeld, you didn't know if it was worth it, then now's the time, okay? Now, if you never thought Arkfeld was interesting, I don't think there's enough here to convert you. So those are the three people. People that never liked Arkfeld, well, then you probably still don't like Arkfeld. People that bought it, you, you do want to upgrade. And people that were on the edge, well, now it's time. Uh, you know, the emitter choice, I think, is really smart. Again, uh, we've been talking a lot about this lately. I think there's a time and a place for low CRI, you know, emitters, high, efficient, bright ones. A time and a place. Uh, I love high CRI, and I, most of my customs have Nietzsche 519As in them, and I handpick, you know, 3500, because that's what I want. This is a, you know, 4000K 
uh, to 5,000K. It's neutral white, they call it. The tint is good. It's a little bit above BBL on high. It's like it's like 28 points above, but it, I don't detect that as green to my eye. I mean, is it above? Yes, but it's also 5,000. So if this was 4,000 and slightly above like that, I think I'd notice it a lot more. Just suffice to say that I got some Hankos, uh, some $850 you know, Hanko Customs with LH351Ds at 4,000K, and they're running about 30, 35 plus, and they look far greener than this one does. So, uh, is it winning tint awards? No, but it is super bright, multifunction, and during the day, you know, the sun is around 5,000 or cooler, depending on the time of day, and the sun is also running above BBL. So, I think that um, if you, you know, are using this as a work light, it's going to really satisfy your need. Uh, if you're an enthusiast, I mean, you're going to have to pry the bezel off, but an emitter swap is possible. It's a 70, it's a 37-37 footprint, which will accept 35-35 emitters with a little niggling. Um, but uh, there you go. I think it's a solid recommend. I love this light. Uh, this, it was announced yesterday on the 19th. Uh, the, it goes on sale on the 24th. Make sure you get right on that sale. Sometimes they sell out. Also note that uh, I think this is the free gift, I believe. Uh, this cute little um, Halloween light. And then also on sale is the uh, Warrior Nano, which is a strong recommend for me as well. And the Warrior Nano, uh, I made a whole video about. So you can go see that video. I'm releasing both videos today at the same time. So I got two videos for you. It's been a minute. You get double the videos. All right, guys. Thanks for watching. Peace.